welcome back to Justin's Arcade. Today I just wanted to put out a quick video, uh, basically a repair log of my battle zone. Um, I picked this up a few months ago and uh, before I loaded it into the truck everything was working great and sure enough when I got it home it started exhibiting uh, some different issues. Which is not to be unexpected in a uh, 40 year old piece of hardware. So this is just going to go over the symptoms and the fixes I had to do to get it running. Alright, so first up, uh, the biggest issue was that the game would not power on reliably. It would only fire up about 50% of the time, and then the rest of the time it just sat with a blank screen and a blinking one player start button. And then the times it did start up, it would spontaneously reboot about 5 or 10 minutes into the game. Uh, it was not stable. And when it did run, it had heavily distorted audio. All the sound effects would play at the right time, but it was just heavily staticky. And finally, the left joystick wouldn't work. Uh, continuity on the micro switch on the joystick was good, but you know, somewhere else up the line, it wasn't receiving inputs. All right, so the first symptom I wanted to tackle was the uh, spontaneous reboots and the unreliable power up. Um, and the most obvious place, at least for me, seemed to be to start with the um, audio regulator board, um, especially since I was having audio problems, um, you know, maybe just rebuilding this board would solve uh, two, two problems with one fix. So I started looking at this board and I thought, you know, I'll just do a, a cap kit, replace the capacitors, do a rebuild on this board. Um, so I try, started trying to figure out which board I had. Um, you can see this is the audio regulator 2 board, and then here's the, the model number. Um, but when I looked online, I noticed uh, there's a bunch of different revisions of this board, and they all have uh, like dash 01, 02, all the way up to 06. So I wasn't entirely sure what board I had. Um, I ended up posting on Reddit, and uh, someone gave me a link to this nice uh, page that lists uh, different versions of the board. And basically what it comes down to is the, the dash numbers that weren't printed on the board just indicate uh, different values of uh, the components on the board. Um, so I started to uh, go and buy a cap kit for this, uh, but yeah, the, the guy on Reddit was basically like, you know, your board looks really clean. It, it may have already been recapped and, you know, definitely hindsight there. Uh, everything is very clean on this board. Uh, the caps do look fairly new, and if you look at the caps, the ends here, you can see they're all at right angles, um, very clean. So this is probably already uh, rebuilt by a professional. Um, more evidence of that is uh, if you look on the back, you can see um, flux and various spots where um, the board was, was soldered. So yeah, so from that we basically kind of decided, hey, this board's already been recapped. Um, I don't need to go ahead and do that. So then I started trying to figure out, well, what, what else could be causing the, the reboots? It still seemed to me like it was related to power. Uh, so I did some more Googling and uh, went online and, and found what is called the Sense Mod. And it's kind of contentious. I would say about 50% of the people say it's great, and the other half say, no, it's awful, you shouldn't do it. Um, but I'll leave a link in the description if you want to read more about it and decide if it's right for you. Uh, based on what I read, though, it, it sounded like it was going to be the right fix for me. Um, so basically the way uh, this works here is you have your line power coming in to the power brick that's at the bottom of the, the cabinet. And that has a transformer on it that has uh, that outputs 36 uh, volts AC and 10.6 uh, volts DC, which then come into this audio regulator board. And from there, this thing produces the plus 5, plus 12, and plus 22 volts. And then those voltages go out to the uh, analog vector generator PCB and the aux auxiliary PCB. Um, one thing this diagram doesn't show is that there is another line that comes back from here that carries that same 5 volts back to the audio regulator board. And the point of that is for this board to regulate the voltage. So anytime you have voltage that goes out, you know, over connectors, whatever, you're going to have some kind of voltage drop. So that return line basically uh, feeds that voltage back and this board can look at it and say, oh, that, you know, I sent out 5 volts, but at the PCB, it's actually me measuring, you know, 4.8. So I need to, to bump it up. Um, and that can have issues depending on, you know, over time if you have corroded connectors or uh, bad connections um, can cause some different voltages. 
in my case, uh, I had already checked all my connectors and everything looked clean. I'd cleaned them all off, all the wires looked good. So I just decided to go ahead and do the sense mod. And what that basically does is just short circuit that sense circuit so that it's reading the five volts that this puts out uh, back at the board. So basically it's getting, it's reading the same voltage that it's outputting and therefore won't try to do any regulation of the voltage. Um, so to do that mod is fairly simple. Um, on the back here, uh, top corner there where this Molex connector is, uh, you can basically just solder these top two pins and then these pins over here. And that just creates the loop so that the voltage that this is outputting is the same voltage it's reading in, and then it won't try to do any regulation. Um, after you do that, you do need to uh, adjust the five volts. Um, so there's a pot right here that you can adjust. Um, you basically need to hook your multimeter up to the game PCB and not, not here, because if you're measuring it here, it's gonna be a different voltage of the game PCB. So uh, I went over to the uh, auxiliary board, or sorry, the vector vector board, and there's a cu couple of test points for voltages, and you can just hook your multimeter up there, and then uh, turn on the system, and then use the adjustment right here to adjust the five volts, and that way you know the five volts at the at the game board is what you're expecting. Um, that worked out really well for me. As soon as I did that mod, that solved the, the first two problems. The game powered on 100% of the time, and uh, it stopped rebooting. And it's ran for, I don't know, probably a dozen or more hours, uh, probably in two-hour chunks, and it's it's never had a problem. So, like I said, it's kind of a uh, contentious thing in the community, but you can go read about it yourself, and uh, it worked really well for me. Now, the, the last two problems, um, I still had the staticky audio and the uh, left joystick wasn't working, and I was really hoping that, you know, if, if I recapped this board, it would solve the audio issues, but since I didn't recap it, I thought, well, maybe, you know, the caps look new, maybe uh, one of these, I forget which one is the, the audio IC, I could replace that. Um, but, you know, I was talking to some people on Reddit again, and they basically said, well, there's this chip um, on the auxiliary board you should check out. Uh, this one up here, and this is the um, Pokey chip, which stands for uh, it's like pot and keyboard integrated circuit or something like that. But it, but it's a uh, I/O chip that can read you know inputs like keys, buttons, or uh, potentiometers um, for input. Um, it also has circuitry in here to generate square waves uh, for sound effects. So the fact that you know I, I had issues with sound and inputs, and this chip does that, that seemed to be a pretty pretty good indicator that that might be the issue. A uh, little Googling led to some replacement chips. You can get the Pokey One, which is a complete recreation of this chip. Um, you can pop that in there. Um, before I decided to order that, though, I thought, well, I'm just going to reseat this chip just to see if uh, maybe it's not getting good connections. You know, I visually inspected it, and all the pins here looked good on the board, but... I just decided to, to go ahead and reseat that to see if it would solve my problem. And uh, sure enough, after I did that, that completely solved the audio and the input issues. Um, it may just be a temporary fix. I don't know. You know th these chips can go bad after a while. And you know, if that's the case, I'll go ahead and order the Pokey one, which seems like a pretty cool replacement. But uh, yeah, so just doing the Sense mod and uh, reseating this chip solved all four of my problems. All right, thanks for watching. I hope this video will help someone else out there that might have the same issues that I did. I've also left links in the video description to all the websites and parts that I referenced in the video. And finally, if you want to do a customization where you can put your name on your arcade, like here, you can see Justin's arcade, I have a link for that in the description too. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.